Where's he's doing? We're all yeah. Yeah. Are we ready? We are ready. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to convene the uh, November 2nd meeting of the Barnesville County Commissioners. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me now in a moment of silence where we think about those brave troops that we have that are, that are fighting for us and, and share with me the hope that all of the ones that are being sent, are going to be coming home from Iraq, do so in one piece. Thank you very much. Now it is time for public comment. Do we have anybody for public comment at this time? I'm hearing none, we'll move. Uh, uh, did you have something for public comment? Uh, She's not public. Okay. At, um, the first item is Mass in Motion Public Leadership Grant. Uh, Beth Albert, Director of Human, Human Services. Beth, you want to step up? Yes, it's great. Should I come up front? Sure. Yes, please do. Come, okay. come on down. All right. Yeah. Oh, and you should uh, mention Sheila is not here. Yes. She's not feeling well today. So, um, she we did call. Under the weather, as they say. We all have to be here. How does everybody? Is there pressure? We all know. Can we have one? Thank you. We have yes. Nothing <laughs> on the agenda, though. That's what I saw. Is there a straw? Well, I have to take my dog's and count up. I can't understand. I'll take it. So, um, I'm I'm actually very pleased to be here today to announce uh, this grant. Um, it's a, a a grant from um, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. And uh, it's a Mass in Motion Municipal Wellness and Leadership Grant. Uh, the Department of Public Health has had the Mass in Motion project for several years. Uh, they added about 11 more municipalities or counties this go round. And it came from the Center for Disease Control. The, the money came from a community transformation grant from the Center for Disease Control. Um, and so that funding was for 11 new mass in motion projects in the Commonwealth. They also got some other funding for, for additional things around tobacco uh, prevention and some money for community health centers to uh, work on some prevention around diabetes and some other chronic health care issues. But for our purposes today, it's the Mass in Motion Municipal Leadership Award. So uh, I just gave you all a copy of a press release we're putting out. It's a five-year uh, grant. We don't have the final details yet, um, but what we're told is that we are going to be funded for what we applied for, which was 60000 in over five years. And it's <clears throat> essentially, I mean, what we, what we have seen here is that you know, several county departments are, are involved with, with health and wellness. And so this is a way for, for us to kind of collectively and collaboratively uh, promote a countywide health and wellness initiative. So we're very excited about it. Um, several departments met uh, a few times over the spring, um, and then this opportunity came up, so we went with it. We were a bit, uh, we had to go with what their strategies were, and we couldn't come up with our own strategies, but there was plenty to work with, um, and we think uh, we picked a strategy around active lifestyles and around healthy, uh, healthy eating. And so more, more to come as we roll this out. They're anticipating a January 1st start date. Christine Stein from our department is going to be leading the project. And it's good news. Yes, it's very good news. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Of course, the, uh, the thing I like the most about it is the uh, integration of all of the other departments along with this. Uh, you know, one, of the, one of the things I think is very important for people to recognize is that uh, our departments are not silos, you know, that uh, we all try to work together as much as possible in order to serve, you know, the, the interest of, of everybody here. So I'm delighted to see, you know, that, that particular piece. That's wonderful. Did you have anything, Pat? Well, I, I was noting that the Buy Fresh, Buy Local piece is, is part of it as well in order to promote healthy eating, which I think is great. Mm. And Francine, I don't know if she'll fancy Randolph will she'll have any participation in this, but I'm sure she would love to. Mm -hmm. You don't know Francine? No, I don't. 
Oh, she's well. She uh, puts on the um, Truro Agricultural Fair. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, and That's she uh, she is also involved in um, is, it, is it Truro? It's the Truro Library. Mm -hmm. uh, in the summertime, they they have some of the children come in mm -hmm. and they teach them gardening and okay. they raise all the, their ve vegetables mm -hmm. and some. We took a tour. Yeah. You remember the mm -hmm. the county extension mm -hmm. program. And she collaborates with some other uh, people at the library and volunteers, I believe, to teach children about. And, and these children raise their vegetables and take them home and eat them, and they love them. And it's a great idea. Yeah. And yeah, so I know she could be, uh, if there were room too. in your grant, I'm sure she would be happy to play a, a role in that in some fashion. When we went, when we went uh, to uh, that uh, tour, we also were invited to go to a uh, farmer's market that they'd had. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember going to that, and I was quite impressed. Mm -hmm. It was a truly a small town effort to, you know, to get fresh vegetables from local, you know, from local growers mm -hmm. out there. And it was, uh, I think she was sort of the prime mover. Yeah, it was the that. Truro Agricultural Festival, right. 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 Yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you went to what kind of? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you go. I was gonna. What kind of programs, Beth? Do you think that you will be starting in January? Exactly what are we doing? Just as an overview, I'm gonna let Christine address this a little bit. It's really not to create new programs. A lot of this is about promoting policies mm -hmm. that enable people to, to to take this on. So, for example, instead of it being a program targeting individuals, it would be more changes in some mm -hmm. policies that would make access to healthy foods more available or access to an active lifestyle more available. So I see it as a way to kind of raise up some of the wonderful things the county's already doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not create new programs, tap into and highlight and promote some of the great community-based stuff that's going on mm -hmm. because what we found with um, when we started you know, working on Healthy Connected Cape Cod was that there was so much going on, but it's like, how do you, how do you promote all the good work that's already being done? But it, and then it's that connecting people to it. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a little different. It's mm -hmm. not a new program mm -hmm. per se. It's more promoting mm -hmm. and advocating for policy changes to, to kind of increase, uh, make it easier for people mm -hmm. to have a, you know access active lifestyles and, and, and healthy eating. So, yeah. Well, before you do that, while you're yeah. on the issue of policy, yes, uh, you may have seen recently, I think it was in either the Barnesville Patriot or the Cape Cod Times, that the Cape has lost a significant amount of agricultural land over mm -hmm. the years, mm -hmm. you know, from way back. And I think some towns are working very hard to preserve the agricultural land they have mm -hmm. for, for this purpose, you know, the buy fresh, buy local. So that might be something that you might be able to do is to encourage towns not to rezone their agricultural land into business or residential, mm -hmm. as the case may be, to preserve it with the, with these goals in mind. So that, that could have, a, mm -hmm. I think, a tremendous effect on the Cape. And one of the things that might, just to piggyback on that, is that uh, we do have a lot of interest uh, and, and perhaps Bill Clark could, you know, could put you on to some of the farmers that, uh, you know, that are part of the Farm Bureau mm -hmm. that uh, might be interested in supporting, you know, the, uh, the local growers. I know we've been we've been very successful, or noticed a, a, an increase in the amount of local farmers markets that they've had in, in the different towns, mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps a direct contact with, you know, with the farm, you know, with the Farm Bureau. Uh, Leo Kakunas, who represents Harwich is, I believe, the president of the Farm Bureau here in the Cape, and, and I know that uh, he could be very supportive of, you know, of, uh, of those sorts of things. One other thing I wanted to mention, too, was um, just a, a few days ago, there was, a, there was a, an article in, I forgot where, because I read a lot of stuff. It was a, a man who's probably now in his 40s, and he's been a diabetic since he was seven, mm -hmm. and he decided that he did not want to become um, the kind of diabetic where you check your sugar in the morning and in the evening and then modify your diet mm -hmm. for twice a day or whatever and adjust. That he wanted to be able to do all the things he liked to do, which was run, be very athletic, be, participate in sports. He didn't really want to, well at that time, but as time went on, and we thought about the, um, um, what do you call them? The, uh, in intravenous injections or the in, the, uh, mm -hmm. insulin? the yeah insulin? yeah the insulin um, mm -hmm. automatic um, yeah, they have these pumps, yes. yeah pumps yeah. that's what it is 
He didn't want to do that either. He thought that that was too much of an infringement on his athletic interests. So when, at a very early age, he decided that he was going to uh, modify what he eats all during the course of the day. And each time he engaged in an activity like running or playing baseball or whatever or eating, he would check his sugar and just modify it as, uh, his, as he went along. And it worked out much. He's now a professor at a university in New Hampshire. And his whole life has been doing it that way. And now he's healthy. He doesn't have a lot of the issues diabetics have with poor circulation uh, and any number of, um, of things that, that diabetics get. So I thought that was that that's a learning thing. And and the other thing he mentioned was that by eating organic foods and uh, particularly organic vegetables, they take longer to digest than processed food that you would buy. The processed food seems to go through your system a lot faster. And so therefore he was able to maintain his his sugar levels better by eating organic foods. So and that's just all right, now I've said it, it's your turn. <laughs> I just but anyway. A, a lot of what you've said really ties into the goals that mm -hmm. we have for this project. Um, one of the projects I've already been working on with um, Kim uh, uh, Conqueror in the Cooperative Extension is a project called Putting Healthy Foods on Pantry Shelves. And I won't go into the details of, of that right now, but it's been a, a year-long endeavor that's really involved a lot of collaboration with different entities, including two county departments. Mm -hmm. It's been very successful. One of the ways we're going to build on it through this grant is by putting, particularly in the spring, summer, fall, putting more fresh fruits and locally grown fresh fruits and vegetables on pantry shelves. So we have some strategies that we help to employ to help that. And as you probably know, quite a few of the pantries have already started growing their own gardens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we also want to encourage what, uh, what's called Grow a Row, which is the federal program, mm -hmm. which encourages farmers and um, just cons regular residents who have their own vegetable garden to grow a row and then donate those foods to a pantry. Um, the other part of that is is, in, is increasing the number of locally grown fresh fruits and vegetables that the YMCA uses for their summer food program for low income children. So it very much ties into what you were saying about you know locally grown produce, encouraging that, tapping into local farmers, and um, yeah. Kind of question then. Uh, we, you know, at one point we had uh, provided some uh, support for lunches in the uh, summertime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it the intention to try to incorporate that or to use uh, And I think the YMCA sort of stepped up and they took did. that over. They did. And part of this grant, although we, we haven't uh, heard definitively yet, is to provide uh, a, an amount of money to the YMCA mm -hmm. to work with them specifically to have the fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. be part of that summer food program. I had met so with PJ uh, yeah. over, at, uh, you know, yeah. over in Hyannis, and, and he was talking to me about how important it was to the Y to mm -hmm. increase the visibility in the community, especially in terms of uh, what the YMCA was trying to do to support the community in, in, in many areas uh, of which this was one. So that seems to tie in with what, what he Definitely. was talking about. Yeah. And then also, I'm sorry, no, just no, no. to add that they, this summer they piloted actually de delivering foods to um, some homes mm -hmm. as opposed to the children having to get to a site. And um, the, I haven't heard a lot about the results of that yet, but what I, anecdotally what I heard was it was very well received and uh, that that would be developed more next summer too. I'm glad to hear that uh, because there, there was some concern that I had that uh, in identifying a site where yeah. there would be food right. as to whether or not transportation would be reasonably available to, you know, to, you know, to get there. Well, I think in some of the cities now, they're looking at having stores in, um, in more, how's it, in well, more locations. Food deserts. The yes. They call them food deserts where yeah. there's no market. So that people can right. go and mm -hmm. get fresh mm -hmm. um, really vegetables and food. It's well. It's a huge problem in Philadelphia. I'm sure yeah. it's a huge problem in New York. I mean, the big cities yeah. have been poverty, low income neighborhoods. It was in the New York Times two days ago. Yep. Was yeah. it two days ago? Yeah, I've, I've read about it. Right. Yeah, I mean, this because is it was talking about German towns in Quincy, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Even yeah. if you 
definitely a few hundred food food deserts 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 right. uh, USDA has been mapping the food deserts and they have oh. criteria by which they decide you know, based on the number of low income people in a particular, it's actually by zip code. Mm -hmm. So the number of people within that zip code and the number of um, markets that would have well, there, was, there was no. I think the article said there was no supermarket in Germantown. Could be. And I think yeah. that was part of the reason why they, you know, they yeah. didn't have access. But if you come off the off the Howes Neck in Germantown, which is mm -hmm. you know, and the, through Marymount, you're on the artery, and the artery has about three or four supermarkets there. But it might be a question of access. So just, I would be remiss if I didn't mention part of this really, um, this grant too, and this work going forward. Although I can't articulate exactly how this will look yet is working with um, five town health departments um, and, and talking with George about this and, and with the, the intent of the grant. Health departments don't have the resources or um, staffing um, to really look at some of the more public health issues, mm -hmm. they're more regulatory and things like that. And so part of this would be looking at how we can help some of the health departments in our targeted five towns, Barnesville, Harwich, Arlene's, Denison, and Fleet. So we'll be working with those health Great. departments. Um, so, and I have time for just one more very oh, brief yeah, you have so Are we? Do you have any other questions about mass no, motion? You have. You have ten minutes. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't, no rush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just one last comment. Um, I have two because we focus more on the healthy foods than the um, active living. Is the collaboration with the commission, uh, particularly around the pathways, mm -hmm. the walking pathways, and yeah. the bike pathways. Mm -hmm. So. That, I think that will be exciting too. Yeah, well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. And one thing, I, you know, they do their walking weekend. That was yes. just last month. Yes. That's one thing. And they do a spring one too, and I can't remember what the spring one is called. But they have like a, maybe it's the Pathways weekend. The lever's in the back. You could turn it. Yeah. No, he's a transportation guy. Cape Cape walk. Cape walk. Cape walk. That's yeah. it, yeah. Another interesting statistic that uh, I don't know if you could follow in this program would be if through healthy eating there is reduction in the uh, access to health care. Now, if you've got any statistics from the hospitals or uh, any of the health care institutions on the Cape, are there fewer people accessing health care because they're living healthier, eating healthier, mm -hmm. living healthier lives? That, because that could be a really a reduction in the cost of health care if people were to do this. Well, it's you know who can answer that question. Mm -hmm. It's you have to turn around a little bit. Maggie knows from the Cape Cod Municipal Health Group, and I know she's involved. Right, which with is this. all the times. She the knows what the top three costs are mm -hmm. associated with the claims mm -hmm. through the health group. Right. And it's smoking is smoking number two. It's not number one. Yeah, and it, it's Cardiac. kind of the sedentary lifestyle is probably number yeah. one, which yeah. causes the heart problems mm -hmm. and the diabetes issues and those types mm -hmm. of things. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, Maggie can answer that question. Yeah, maybe Maggie could, because um, Blue Cross, well, you have more than one uh, provider. Yeah, Blue though. Cross and... Uh, but they all, all the providers provide the statistics. Don't yeah, they? exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it would be something interesting to follow to see <laughs> if there's any change in the access to health care or the change in the uh, predominant uh, reasons why people access health care. Can I show you that because of HIPAA and all that, that we're talking about statistics at the 10,000 foot level, right. yeah. not individuals right. Right. and what their right. own oh, problems are. But aren't they only for the Cape? Only well, for the they're group? for the Cape Cod Municipal Health Group. Right. What I'm just saying is it's not, we don't know what individuals. No, no, blah, I know, and you don't want to know that. You just exactly. want to know the big numbers. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But what, what we do know from the, the evidence base from other pro similar projects mm -hmm. is that it can take quite a few years for, them for that to catch up, mm, yeah. but definitely worth keeping in mind. And just yeah. keeping in yeah. mind that, that, that there could be a real effect on the access to, on the cost mm -hmm. of health care. I don't if know, if one of the things, and I guess I need to check this out because I don't know, is that the mass in motion on the state level, mm -hmm. if, if they're looking at all at the and to me, it would, it would it might not be access to your primary care physician, but it would be mm -hmm. chronic health conditions mm -hmm. would be something that they would look mm -hmm. at um, as far as you know if you're if you're increasing your prevention efforts and promoting wellness, do you then see a reduction in chronic health issues like diabetes mm -hmm. and heart conditions? 
obesity, things like that. So. Well, anecdotally, when I went for my physical, uh, Dr. Mariano you know, reaches over, grabs a, grabs a, a love handle and says, you know, if you did some exercise, you get rid of that. So I think a lot of us could do that. I know it hasn't gone yet, but I haven't exercised in one. So, um, what else did you have? I just re really quickly, um, I, like the hip I also yeah. wanted to take a minute to announce that we did um, hire a coordinator for the regional network to address homelessness. We, oh. um, yes. we hired Paula Schnapp. Paula Schnapp. Paula Schnapp. We've known mm -hmm. her for a long um, time. Yeah, Paula was actually involved, uh, one of the, the people who helped write the first ICHH grant when they when mm -hmm. they did the regional network And structure. she's also active in the Barnstable uh, Housing Authority, as we call it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, she's got a lot of work to do, and mm -hmm. we're thrilled to have finally filled that, good. that consulting position. Um, and she's well known in the community as well. Yes. So. And the funding for that is coming from? <clears throat> from my budget, from the county uh, budget. This is one of the positions that uh, I included in my fiscal year budget. Well, well, that's why I wanted you give yourself one of those. <laughs> <laughs> We're paying for it. Not everybody the, county, else, the, county, the county is paying for this position 100% and, and it's, it's something, you know, we're the convening agency for the regional network. We're committed to it and, and, and hiring, okay. getting money for a consultant is, is part of our commitment. We'll extend our warm welcome to Paul. I will do that. Yes, I will do that. Great. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll bring this her is in exciting. at some point to give you an update on what's going on. Yeah, these are the things that absolutely. are really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they are. I mean, they're congratulations in to you for applying, to even thinking of applying. And so you you know what I talked about? You know, when I was is, is you know regional. Nobody, you know, other doing mm -hmm. coordination. All of those, yeah. all of the things that are in mm -hmm. our mission. Um, and those are the kind of projects that we're focusing on. So. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. So I see you on the 18th? Yes. Okay. And maybe before? No, maybe before. Sorry, you never know. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Are you here for something like that? Oh, okay. We're not doing any biking then, huh? Do you want to talk about something? Yeah. All right. Okay. We have a couple minutes before we on the uh, update on the of health, uh, health reform. Yep. Uh, did you want to uh, take that moment to uh, take a look at the uh, summary of that? Uh, yeah, I did, already. Okay. Did you have any comment no, on No, I that? have no comment. So okay. I would... There is one item that's part of this is to appoint uh, the members of the... Of the oh, yeah, newly, let's... The, of the renamed... Uh, well, let me, if I may, get to that. Where is the list of that? I don't know. I did not bring the summary. I have. Oh, oh right. the summary? It's probably in the package, though, if you want to look in the package. This number What's 11. What's the number? Vote right? to reconstitute the law. And I'll just speak to that if I could. Sure. Since I, um, I attend the Lyme Disease Task Force meetings. I don't know why. I don't think I'm a liaison, but I made myself a liaison, I guess. Good for you. And um, so yes. we did have a meeting back on October 19th. And we really looked at the direction of the task force, where it has been, where it needs to go. The fact that it was called um, the Barnesville County um, Task Force, but we had members. We had people sometimes that came from the, it was the Cape and Islands mm -hmm. right. Lyme Disease Task Force. Mm -hmm. And we thought now that, that um, the Vineyard has their own group, right. and Nantucket has its own group. And we thought we don't want to, to um, disengage from either community, but um, but we are really not anymore the Cape and Islands Task Force, we're really the Barnesville County Task Force, but they on, would be on our mailing list, we would invite them to our meetings and make them welcome and share with them whatever we're doing, and, and they obviously would share with us what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So then um, uh, it, it was time to take a look at changing the name to the Barnesville County Lyme and Other Tick-Borne Diseases Task Force because there are the um, uh, It doesn't other really sing, though. Does huh? It doesn't really sing, though. It doesn't <laughs> sing, <laughs> but sing. it says what it's about, yes, which it is does. more That's than just sure. Lyme disease. Right. I mean, this is group consensus. I know. So the, um, so the, the members would be Brenda Bolin, who has been the chairman for some time now, and has been a long, long-serving member God of the task force. She's done a terrific job. Yes, she too. really does. She She's cares terrific. so much about yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Dante, Sam Dante, who is incredible, he attends all the time. He makes time for himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Gay Freeman. This uh, would be a new member, a primary care physician, who has volunteered her time. The same with Helen Grimm, who's a school nurse. Mm -hmm. And it's important, <coughs> we felt it's important to have a school nurse on the task force because um, of the uh, education mm -hmm. in the schools. Mm -hmm. and, and a school nurse knows what, uh, what a uh, school nurse deals Those with so on a regular basis, yeah. so we were happy to have her volunteer. Mm -hmm. Henry Lind, who's, the, who's already on the mm -hmm. task force, is the natural resource officer in East Ham. And then Joyce McConnell, who's also an RN, mm -hmm. and has had family experience with uh, babesiosis. Yeah. It's hard to remember how to say that word. So anyway, that's what's before us, and I, I absolutely uh, recommend that we create, Good. recreate the task force, appoint these numbers, and change the name. Well, the, the, actually, the best part of it is that Brenda is continuing. Uh, yes. Because she, she's <coughs> such a wonderful contribution. I'm she so does. I'm happy that she's, you know, still willing to Absolutely. Okay, then are we, then, uh, are we ready to vote? I will the, move the uh, uh, summary of items. Okay, and uh, I'll second that, and uh, all those for the discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, and uh, I, and this, that includes what we have here. Yep. And I think that's a good piece of work today. Okay. I do have another vote, if I may indulge you, um, and that vote is, uh, the motion would be to approve the license plate budget for marketing expenses for 2012 in the amount of $37,000 in license plate funds. Because that, that's a usual article. That's a usual yeah. thing, yeah. Okay. Is that number different from last year? Do you I know? think it's been about, about, about the same. Consistently, yeah. yeah consistently it's like a, around the 40, they, Their budget is 100, and we're around a third, a little bit more than a third, mm -hmm. obviously. Okay, I'll remove approval. Okay, okay. I'll second. And uh, no further discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, um, if <coughs> I don't mind, Mr. Chairman, I want to remind you that. Um, floating around in the stratosphere here is the annual Mass oh, yes. Municipal oh, yeah. Association mm -hmm. uh, Conference. It is January 20th and 21st, of 2012, in Boston, of course, at the mm -hmm. at the Hines and the Sheraton Hotel. So you should let Kara. Kara is kind of coordinating what's going on. And I think she said you spoke. I already and have figured yeah. out what you're doing. So Bill, if you could do that, and I'll make sure Sheila knows that's. Around and here. Uh, I think that uh, we go. Or I, I, you have, you, we have the mirror. Is it the um, the insurance thing on Saturday? Do you go to that? The Maya. Thing? He's Maya. talking about the Maya, Maya luncheon. Oh, the Maya uh, I'll luncheon. sign you up for that. Yeah. Once we get registered, they'll send me a, a, a package and I'll okay. put you all on it. And uh, are you planning to go to the, the dinner on Friday? No. Okay. You usually do the Wemo lunch. I, would, and I do the Wemo couple lunch. Of, and I think there are some sessions Kara seems to be asking about that you have to sign up for. So you should check with her. Okay. I, have check really with um, I might add that uh, they, I have been asked to uh, present a workshop on oh. the pitfalls of hiring a town manager. Oh, very impressive. <laughs> very I told them I'd be very happy to do that. I, I'm <laughs> sure you're on the successful side of the panel. Particularly how the open meeting law intersects <coughs> with the process of hiring a town manager every step of the way because uh, it's the selectmen who do the hiring. You have to constantly, everything you do, you have to look at the open meeting law and see what you can do, what you can't do. Does it have to be posted? Does it not have to be posted? What is the subcommittee who's, oh, believe me. So yeah. I'm going to make a presentation what was Caesar's on the wife? Oh, awesome. What was Caesar's wife's name? Was it Portia? Um, you know, you have to be, you know, it's like, you have to be so pure. So it takes all the fun out of it. Well, you have to make sure that you, you know, are, are not found, not in compliance with the open meeting. Oh, well, I've been reminded. Especially if you have watchdogs. Watch <laughs> well, you're, you, you they, there was just, the case came down about the sandwich. School committee and their action on the because it wasn't a posted meeting. Oh yeah, sort yeah, of they, worked they, out good for the town of Sandwich yeah. the, the way they wanted it, but it was not valid because they didn't have a posted meeting. So that, that's what you have to, you know, those are the right. things you're trying to avoid. Absolutely. So <laughs> cause problems. Um, and then the final thing I have, and then I'll text Maggie and have her come in. Is here's my weekly report, and Beth right. talked about one thing already on that. Um, I do want you to know that in conjunction with publishing our annual report, which 
Elaine is working on in here, you have the list of pending litigation for Barnesville County, and it's just a list, and we put that in the uh, annual report, as I said. And what I will do is have Bob Troy at a future meeting come in just to kind of give you an update on what those are and what those are about. Um, I did want you to know that the Septic System Test Center um, has entered into an agreement with the Town of Barnesville to site one of the alternative septic systems at the Barnesville Wastewater Treatment Plant. That's the first time we've done this. Um, it's a, we think it's a good thing. Um, provides an excellent opportunity for the test center to obtain data on the, this kind of new technology that they're testing and for the vendor to, to test mm -hmm. the system. So George is very enthusiastic about that. He did a terrific job working with the town of Barnesville to get that side. Yeah, I think this is a really important thing because I think other towns are going to want to explore alternatives mm -hmm. or at least have data on the exploration of alternatives, yeah. not necessarily every town doing it themselves. Right. And um, I did finally connect with George and had a tour of that facility a couple oh. months ago in the summer. And uh, it was a freezing yeah. cold out. And it, and it was really fascinating. And, and the fact that his, that program is so well respected, not uh, around the state, but also national. Oh, yeah. I mean, it right. really is. Um, major companies look to him to, um, to test these devices right. for them, right. and they have absolute confidence and trust in, the, in his ability to do it. Yeah. And he's so smart because um, he, um, he also has a, a set aside in terms of if for any reason it ever had to be closed down. We wouldn't have to scramble around for funds to right. do that. There are right. funds available if we ever had to stop using it uh, for, for mm -hmm. the intended purpose, right. that uh, we'd be able to do that. And and he I do really want, does things very well. He does. Well. And George is very good. He's very thorough. He knows what he's doing. One, I do want to mention DEP, because mm -hmm. really the Department of Environmental Protection has funded the test center for us. We've gotten mm -hmm. grants every year. George right. is very good at getting grants, right. but they get something out of it too because they get the data on uh, exactly. what these systems are mm -hmm. capable of and in some cases what they're not capable of. So they appreciate it too, but we should put a, a thank you out to DEP because they're, they're funding it for right. us. Good. Um, and then, then I did want to mention from uh, wearing my retirement association hat that the retirement association notified all the unit treasurers that Mark Foley, uh, the deputy fire chief in East Ham, was declared the elected member of the retirement board for the next three-year term, starting January 7, 2012, through January 6, 2015. Uh, Mark was the only candidate to file nomination papers for that position. So instead of holding an election with one person on the ballot, we declare the uh, person not uh, elected. Okay, so that's why we didn't receive a. That's why you didn't receive a ballot this time. Yep. And then I also want you to know that um, yesterday I was at the town of Chatham uh, meeting with their board of selectmen and their finance committee. I gave them a presentation on the pension system. I've attached a copy of it um, for you to take a look at. I'll be pleased to give that to you at some meeting in the future. I think it's uh, very helpful. The session went very well. I sort of prefaced my remarks on GASB OPEB. There's a little confusion about what's pension and what's GASB OPEB. So I talked a little bit about that um, to the uh, to the town, and I think they were very appreciative. I think the presentation went pretty good, so, so that was good. And then just finally, just to let you know that we just got the October Registry of Deeds numbers, and um, fairly good news on the deeds tax. It was uh, five, about 550000 for the month, 546793 to be exact. It's 7.2% ahead of the same period last year. Um, and overall, year to date, we're just a little bit behind, 2.8 percent, the same period as last year's. Now, did that mean, must mean that there are other periods during the year that are higher. It does. It goes July. up and it goes down. Even if you looked at the first the four spring months, spring maybe is a higher. Uh, yeah, February is usually low. It's dependent on the weather. January can be dependent on the weather. May and June are usually higher because mm -hmm. December can be higher. People are rushing to get things done before the end of the federal tax year, those types of things. So. Now, I, I know that this is only one part of our revenue source, mm -hmm. but I really appreciate having this information because the Assembly of Delegates is really on a, on a concern trip. They are really worried about yep. the budget. And I said to them, why would you worry about something over which you have no control? I mean, you have no responsibility for that. You know, all you do is prove it. Right. Now, granted, you have a certain responsibility 
and acknowledging that the budget that was prepared and presented to you was reasonable, that it, it was not overly um, ambitious right. and maybe not too conservative. So you really have to measure your budget against those two criteria. But at the same time, they are worrying themselves into, uh, into what actions they think they need to take as their finance committee as to uh, whether or not they should present to us some curtailments or some reductions uh, over from now until whatever month. So, well, personally, I would resist uh, their, uh, say their, their interest. I, I, I would accept their interest, but I would resist uh, following up on anything. Wait, let me, let me answer the question. Uh, I don't know if you were there a couple of weeks ago when I gave my presentation no, on the treasury. There. I think, Pat, that went a long way with the finance committee explaining how um, the ups and downs can work. It's, so, you, you know, I think there was a focus on, oh, the D's number, you have to look at it, you know, you can't look at it one piece. You have to look at the overall picture. And so when the treasurer's report came out in at the end of August, we scheduled a session with the finance committee that I did a presentation on the treasurer's board, explained how all of the ins and outs and ups and downs work. And I think that went a long way to helping them feel better about how the projections work and how I think the county financially has put us in a position where we can um, suffer through successfully the volatility. We've sort of cushioned out the volatility with reserves and some other things that we have out there where we don't have to worry if we're 2 or 3 percent. If we're 10 percent or 12 percent or 20 percent, we have to start worrying. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're within this kind of zone of comfort, we, we'll be okay. So you think you kind of... Uh I think they, they felt much waters. better about that. Yeah. Now, not everybody was there because it was finance committee, so sometimes, you know, you mm -hmm. don't cover all of this, but I think it was a good meeting. So you're suggesting you're actually attempting to do money management in this area? No, I think, Bill, that we've financially put ourselves in a position where we don't have, have to worry about some of the volatility that's inherent in the revenue stream we have. There's just We've sort of taken that out. Now that's not to say, if you know you have a 20% drop, that's a problem, and you have to deal with it up front. You can't sit around and wait and say, "Well, I hope it gets better tomorrow." You have to get in front of it and say, "Well, you we have to freeze this or freeze that, or you know, sort of stop expenditures." And and if you get to a drastic point, you have to cut expenditures. But I think we've taken out the, the okay. normal volatility. Let me say. In 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 my, in my past history, variance reporting was essential to, to manage the operation right. of the commercial activity. And uh, one of the questions we get asked on a regular basis at the assembly is something that leads to what is the what is the number that we have arbitrarily selected that we have to be said to be concerned. Twenty percent is you know, uh, I'm not I, I don't mean to suggest I'm giving you a number. <laughs> All right, but I'm saying the twenty percent is an enormous variance, but it is exactly yeah, so right. That's why I don't want uh, to pin myself point, at that point. I think the we would have to make some serious, serious uh, decisions as we guys are going forward. Are we done? I'm done. You're I do have a away copy for. Uh, yeah. We're eating into it. Ten minutes into our time. Right. <laughs> but that's good. We well, can always come back. Okay. If we have so you were, uh, Mr. Chairman, are you ready to move on? This really a copy for Sheila. I have a copy for Sheila too. No, no, I have a copy for her. No, I covered all my bases. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I do... Up here. We're, we're having an update on municipal health care reform, and there was some suggestion as to whether or not it would be a potential executive session. Are you recommending that it be one? I, I am. This oh, is really are. not about the health care reform in terms of what changes are we making to plans. It's more the strategy that Maggie and I want to adopt relative to going forward. Okay, so and this so, is to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. I have the motion for you here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. First of all, you must declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental impact, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have to read the uh, this protocol, right? Because I have to read this case by compact. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we also... And I don't, I don't think we're coming back, back to out open of open session. Okay. I'm declaring that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body 
with regard to the topic uh, of municipal care reform. Uh, and therefore, I am moving to go into executive session to discuss strategy with regard to with respect to collective bargaining and that I declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental factor in the bargaining position of the body and to and not to come back uh, or reconvene an open session. That is the motion. Second. Yeah. Uh, any discussion? Yeah. Okay, then I, I vote as well. So the two of us. Yeah, but I, it's a roll call. It's a roll call. So you have to do I and I. Majority I. 